So finally, the work is done, the project is ready. So four months back, I gave myself a challenge that I'm gonna build a filament tune system. So I went online, searched a lot of content regarding this thing, but there was not much content regarding the filament tune system. Well, there are a few articles, a few Reddit community, mainly inactive. Then I went on YouTube regarding this thing, and I searched about this. Uh, there are there are many videos of filament tune system, and they were like kind of expensive. They are using like $500 motor they're using the welding machine on a lot of stuff for which most people don't have access to those kind of tools so i gave myself challenge that i'm going to build one of the simplest as well as one of the cheapest quantum digital system as possible and maybe compact also if you if you want to say that it will use very less space but as the one thing cheapest doesn't mean it producing bad quality filament i produced my first batch of filament and it's printing really really well so today in this video i'm going to break down this machine uh when i say breakdown don't really mean with the hammer but actually i'm going to break down the cost parts that i use and also the cost as i said and cost may differ from place to place if you're like from countries like European Union or you're from like United States perhaps maybe expensive a little bit and if you're from countries like China or Vietnam parts can be cheaper because those countries are like producing a lot of this stuff so let's begin this video so okay let's do the parts breakdown so first thing that comes and this is one of the most important thing I would say is this 8.3 newton meter torque gear dc motor this rotates at the rpm of 10 it's a 10 rpm dc motor and this motor is connected to the speed controller which is 12 to 24 volt speed controller which help us to control the extrusion speed and then next up we have rexc 100 which is comes with a relay in order to make it work and we are using k type thermistor which is connected to rexc 100 in order to monitor and control the temperature can control the temperature up to like 300 degrees celsius then next up i'm using this 12 volt 15 amp power supply in order to power our this 10 rpm main dc motor as well as this this puller dc motor so this is like one of the most important thing in this machine the next show and the main thing is actually the barrel and the auger so i'm using 420 millimeter long auger and a 400 millimeter long barrel and which is cut in middle in order to put the side over there to pour the filament into it and then next up we have this heater and this heat this is 100 millimeter long 16 mm millimeter in diameter heater and this heater can reach up to like 300 degrees celsius in temperature and but i'm using like 170 degree to in order to produce the quality filament and this is sourced from like local manufacturer actually and this barrel is holded by this welded 90 degree angle which i got it welded into this and by which it because it is very near to the heater so it it needs to be some metal part not some 3d printed part otherwise it, it will get melted so i think this is a little bit like you have to go to the local hardware store if you don't have the welding machine well i gone to my nearest metal workshop and they just welded it for me for free because they were more like my friends and then next thing we are using like this two 12 volt fans uh, basically these fans are like used in computer mostly so i'm using these two fans it rotate at the arcom like i think 6000 and uh, it produces like strong air the filament comes from the nozzle and the then it cooled down by these two fans and the next thing and this is like one of the most important thing and this is mostly 3d printed part and this is puller i'm using this puller and if you want to know more about this puller and want to download the 3d file so go and check out the video which i've linked in the description so you can watch the whole assembly process and in that video i've given the download link also so you can go and check it out and in this puller i'm using this 60 rpm k dc motor and which is like connected to other few gears and that's how this filament cooler really works and most of and one more important thing is nozzle which do, many people don't really talk about so i'm using two millimeter diameter nozzle and you can increase the nozzle size if you want to like three or maximum up to four but in order to achieve the desired diameter of the filament like 1.75 millimeter or 2.85 millimeter you have to uh, you have to increase the puller speed or decrease it whatever I'm using this tubular box wrench and this is a Elano mm tubular box wrench and i'm instead of coupling i'm using this to connect the dc motor with the auger because it is more stronger it is made up of steel and it is better i can tighten it with the nut to the dc motor shaft and in auger you have to, it is more about the grip and because here is like a lot of torque is involved so that grip grip eventually fails so and i broke like four couplings in the process then i found out about this tubular wrench and i'm using this so i would recommend use this instead of like coupling this is more better so you have to like play with this machine a little bit in order to produce a good quality filament because it's a speed game basically 
So this, these are the like whole parts and there are like few miscellaneous parts like um, a wood nuts and one 3D printed holder for the barrel which is like the very back end because they're like that part of the barrel did not get heated of, because of heater so you can use some 3D printed part to in order to provide extra support to the barrel and then there's relay cover and the holder for REXC100 in order to protect myself from accidental shots and few other stuff which don't really count for. So this is all, these are all are the machine parts and this is the whole breakdown and one of the detailed breakdown of this machine. Okay, so real quick now let's do the cost breakdown. So this DC motor, the gate DC motor with 8.3 nm of torque cost me around $18. And then the speed controller cost me around $4. Then the REXC100 with the relay as well as the K-type thermistor all in one pack cost me around $20. 12 volt 15 amp power supply cost me around $10. The auger and the barrel together cost me around like $6. The heater cost me around $18. These two fans cost me around $2. And the DC motor in the puller cost me around $8 and but if you include all the parts like bearing and nuts and bolt that I've used in this puller then it will cost me around $10. Then this tubular wrench which is I'm using to connect the DC motor with the auger cost me around like $1 from local hardware store and the puller speed controller cost me around $4 and other parts like other miscellaneous stuff like this wooden board which was lying in my house and nuts and bolts and these 90 degree angles so if you add all the cost and go to the maximum side so this would cost me around like six dollars so in total it cost me $99 how exact the number is guys and this is completely unintentional I didn't uh, alter the number in order to get the exact 99 figure it just I got the 99 figure so let's round it up and say 100 so now let's produce some filament and let's see how's the filament quality gonna be and then we're gonna use that filament to 3d print something So guys, we did produce some good quality filament. You can see 1.8 millimeter, which is kind of bigger, like 0.1 millimeter. And here like 0.8 and 0.7. So we got a good measurement here. So basically it took quite a little bit practice in order to produce good quality filament. But I did produce this little longer filament and you need to play with the speed of puller and the speed of extruder. So you have to play with it in order to get that good quality. So I'm playing with it quite a long time and I think this is the finest result that I got from playing for a bit. And still it's not even close to the industrial grade and I don't think it will reach that level because they're using like very high quality and very expensive machines. But anyway guys and after playing for like a half an hour i got like you you can see i produced this lot of crap but anyways i think we got the i mean satisfactory result not too much but well, i'm gonna play with this machine for a few days more until unless i'm gonna measure out what is a good rpm in order to get out the finest quality filament and you can see there's little bit dust inside so i have to like add the filter in it otherwise there's no bubble in it so that's a good thing so let's print with this filament. let's see how the print quality gonna be Okay, so print is done. You can see it's a benchy that I printed. It's a ship. It may seem a little bit messy because it's a transparent, but you need to add the color palette in order to extrude the colored filament. But anyways, so I mean, I would say the walls are kind of smoother. It is not rough at all. I was expecting a little bit more bad quality. So it is like much above the expectation. So if I print with the industrial filament and then compared this thing with that, 
I would say it's like 90% of that industrial produce, so you can say 95. So we're getting a really, really, really decent quality filament from this. And the quality of filament also depends on the pellets you are using. I think these are like high quality. That's why the filament quality is much, much better. So what do you think about this thing? Let me know in the comment box. Do you think this project is successful or not? Well, for me, it is kind of successful for you. You have to comment down below. And if you have any question, you can also ask in the comment box.